We're live. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. We're having uh, some technical difficulties with Google Plus right now, so uh, the guys from the Dash are, are working on uh, installing some software and getting with us soon. So, uh, so having said that, we're going to flip the script on the show a little bit here and talk about the news first, and then we have uh, we have a question and answer session with uh, with the guys from the Dash, which we'll get to. My name is Charles Luzar from Crowdfund Insider. Uh, Alon Gorin from Invested In is, is here as he is every week. Um, use hashtag inside crowd on Twitter uh, to discuss live during the show and also uh, feel free to use the Q&A section of Google Plus. Uh, if you guys could please just plus one uh, questions that you want to see answered and uh, we'll get to as many of them as we can. Um, with that, the news this week, uh, top story for us this week was the Dash, ironically, so we're going to find out more about that uh, very soon. Uh, number two was a story from coming out of LendInvest in the UK about peer-to-peer -peer, uh, peer -peer lending. And I found it interesting that, uh, that's, that Christian Face from LendInvest actually argues in the piece for more stringent regulation of the P2P space in the UK. Uh, there's Toby. Cross fingers, we'll be able to hear him in a second. Toby. Toby. You might want to turn on some headphones. Plug in some headphones or something? Or There we go. We got it now. Oh, we're good. We got them. Yeah. Welcome. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> It's okay. It happens. Uh, it's you know, for anybody that hasn't had the pleasure of running something through Google Plus, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll just leave it at that. It's not fun. Um, so if you guys don't mind introducing yourselves. Okay. So hey, I'm Anna. I'm the head of design at Bragi, and um, yeah, this is next to me, Toby, our um, development chief, I would say. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, and you guys are from Bragi. You have raised uh, hair over 2.3 million dollars in uh, less than a couple weeks on Kickstarter, which is incredible. Congratulations on the raise. Um, Thank you. you know, we are we are super excited to have you on the show because you are the biggest Kickstarter project out there right now, and it's very rare that that we get to talk face to face with somebody that's on a platform like Kickstarter during the raise. So. Um, so with that said, we want to get right into it. Uh, and, and first, if you could just describe the Dash for anybody that hasn't seen the campaign and isn't familiar with the product. Okay, so the Dash is the world's uh, first smart in-ear headphone. So it's an in-ear headphone, like everybody knows it, but it's completely without cables. That's the first step and the first new thing, because it's nothing that has been there before. Um, you can... You Use it with your smartphone or without. So we have an integrated 4GB um, safety place, so you can save all your music on it and just hear it without a smartphone, can go running or something and don't need to take any device with you. Uh, the next big thing about it is um, we have uh, sensors inside, so it's a biosensic computer more or less. Um, you can have, when you go running, you can uh, measure your blood flow or your pulse or your heartbeat and um, on the other hand, you can somehow measure your activities, so you can measure your your steps or your cadence. So without a smartphone, you can it's more like a fitness generator, but with a smartphone together, it's you can see you can use it with all the other um, things like run testic or get fit or all these apps. So you can see your runs and um, yeah, how your workout was was that's it actually. So huge list of features there. there for a cool product. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the nerdy description of it is it's a wearable microcomputer. Now, Nikolai in the in the pitch so, video alludes to a an experience years back. I think he uses the phrase that showed him how fragile life was. Um, do, you, do you guys have? I know that he's not on the call, and I, I realize you know you may not want to speak for him, but I was curious what that experience was, and if you have any insight into what happened there. Yeah, it, it's... Um, if, and if it's personal, it's fine. I just had to ask. It was a personal experience for, for, for Nikolai and his family. And um, it is true. It, it did show him that life is very fragile. And then every idea has to come from some sort of inspiration. If it can come from something 
tragic and sad, well, at least we gain something out of it. Well, I'll have to uh, I'll have to follow up with him and see see if I can I can find out more because um, I'm very interested. What the process for the Kickstarter campaign? When did that begin? How long How long between the time that that you guys decided to go to Kickstarter and when you actually launched the campaign? Um, so actually, I think everything started before two years. Or the first idea what was when was it born? Do you think? I mean. We actually went together. I, I mean, I jumped in the first time before a year or something, but you started way earlier, right? Yeah, I was going to say the, the, the. I mean, talking about when we decided to go on Kickstarter was. It was throughout this, the last 12 months, that the, the decision was taken. In its simplest sense, the Dash is relatively simple. It's an embedded microcomputer. But to make something that small, it requires quite high technology. And then one of the best ways to get money is, is Kickstarter. And so do you guys think about it, just to kind of go back, um, you know, when Charles first brought you on, he said these guys have raised a little over $2.3 um, uh, Do you guys think of it as, this is kind of a two-part question, so do you guys think of it as raising money, or do you just think of it as, you know, normal commerce sales, so you're pre-selling a product? Uh, how, well, how do you guys see it? Yeah, I mean, it, it, of course we're, we're, we're naturally delighted that we've generated so much interest, but um, I mean, basically it's, it's $2 million of promises now. Um, in terms of the development cost of, of something like Dash, I mean, basically we've all been working for free out of our garages for the last year and a bit, nearly two years. Um, Has that... It, has that met you guys, or has that have brought you guys a ton of, uh, obviously there's going to be a ton of shit talking, a ton of people coming after you. Um, first thing my partner said when he saw it was like, there's no chance they're fitting that kind of technology in such a tiny piece. Are you having just a ton of those type of folks that don't actually fully understand it, kind of coming at you going like, we understand it, you just can't do it. Is, is the sort of recognition bringing you bad just instead of good also? It brings us both. There are, there are a lot of very insightful comments on the, the Kickstarter pages are full of them and um, you know, we, we, we try very hard to answer all of the questions completely and truthfully and, and we leave nothing to the imagination. We, we know that from the, the mechanical side all of the components fit. It's tight, it's very tight but they fit. Um, we believe we'll end up with a robust device and from the software side um, it's just another embedded system. It's not that complicated. What What have been the biggest surprises about the campaign? And and you, you mentioned that interaction between the your backers and yourself. Um, ha, have there been any Have there been any like novel concepts or or improvements to the device or any new features that that you know maybe a backer has suggested or, or how? How are you guys gleaning information from your backers as you develop uh, develop the product? So, um, I mean, first, of course, it was a surprise that everything went so fast. And in the first time, it was really more like acting and all these emails and all this input. It was really a huge amount, and we were just happy to, to get this, this great feedback. Um, yeah, and now, but, I mean, there were a lot of ideas, and we tried to... Um, get into all of them and there's anyway there's a lot that we thought about as well so it's now I think it's a, it's a mix so we try to somehow give the people a good feedback and try to think about their ideas and combine it somehow with our ideas and with the stuff that already was there and um, yeah we just posted our new stretch goal and I think I mean it was anyway planned somehow but I think or we think it's it's Really, a lot what what people what about the wishes of people. So it's it's somehow a mix, but we we definitely try to somehow give the people something back that yeah, yeah they could work with. I was going to say, I from the development side, we always what we have to be careful now is we don't overpromise because mm -hmm. there are some really cool ideas in the in the Kickstarter pages. Some of them we didn't think of ourselves, and you know it's always tempting as a, as a developer where you. 
Or it's actually even worse from Nikolai's side. He sees these really cool ideas and says, oh, could we do that one too? And I'm like, no, Nikolai, no. <laughs> Next time. Version two, perhaps. <laughs> I, I, I understand that from like a CEO standpoint at a company, you're sitting at your desk, some great idea comes to you or somebody comes to you and you just jump out of your desk and start running around the office telling people, this is what we have to do. Even if it's completely unrealistic, you can't do it, but you just want to do it so bad. So I understand that now you guys have hundreds of thousands of people submitting those ideas to you. Uh, I could imagine it can get tough. I mean, the, 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 sorry. Yeah, I've, I've worked on, on low-power embedded systems all my working life, and, and the, the great problem is, is we, we, have a, we have a huge amount of processing power inside the dash. The resources inside there are, are, are quite, quite considerable. And it, it's very tempting to say, yeah, you know, there's all this cool processing we can add and, and do all these really lovely things. We can do them all, but then we'll have a lifetime of about 10 minutes, which our customers won't be very happy with. Yeah, I actually think we got a question. One of the questions had to do with the uh, with the battery, actually. So might as well quickly ask that since you mentioned it. Um, so uh, somebody, uh, Ginger, asked, uh, do both sides of the earpiece consume the same power? Do they both have 100 MHA? Um, uh, they're just asking. They said, you know, they think the right side uh, most likely has um, has takes more power, but they're wondering from you. Well, I mean, the speculation is all, all quite entertaining, but I mean, it, it stands to reason that one side without the other is a bit of a poor, poor product. We aim to have both sides with the same power consumption. Uh, cool. They have the same battery on each side, and then there's no sense having one lasting longer than the other particularly. Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to embedded systems, it's, it's simply a matter of being diligent and careful and making sure that they both last as long as possible. Cool. How, how much how much insight do you guys have into the process of like uh, trying to market the campaign and and you know are there any are there any uh, strategies that that you guys have used to to market the dash that have worked particularly well? I mean, it's a huge you know two point three million is a huge number. You, you you obviously did something right along the way. What what is it? Tell us tell us the secret. It's Nikolai's happy smiling face. <laughs> is that what it is? Well, I, I I'll have to I'll have to send him a check and a nice card then. Maybe we'll, maybe. We can make it later. <laughs> I mean, at first we 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 saw all these other Kickstarter campaigns, and definitely we worked hard and tried to make a nice movie and try to explain as much as we can. But for us, the personal side of the thing was was really important the whole time because it's a personal product and it's not about the design; it's more about the experience of the product. So the campaign somehow should try to be personal as well. And at first, we really just started with all our Kickstarter friends and everyone who we know, and all the Facebook friends and all crowdfunding guys we know. And just after a few days, we stepped in with some press release work. So the first one and a half or two days was really just through Kickstarter itself. And that was the thing why we were so surprised as well, because, yeah, it was somehow the people liked just the way we did it. Yeah, so that, that's something I always have to tell people about, and I've probably mentioned it on this show a bazillion times, but, um, you know, people don't realize that you have to start from your friends and family and your own community and bring people on board before you even share the project. People are blown away when I have to explain to them that you don't even share your project. You don't put a press release out. You don't even tell the public that it exists until your mom, your sister, your brother, and your best friends have all bought into it, right? Because you look like an idiot when you share it with the world and there's a big fat zero on it. And people yeah. just don't get it. So that uh, I commend you guys for doing it right immediately the first time. Um, but that also, I, I have a, a inter sort of this thing that a lot of people don't realize is people have to, to be successful, you have to put at least effort, if not money, behind the campaign even before you begin. You have to create the video. You've got to do it right. So. Did you guys were you guys conscious of that? Do you did the people making the video are they on your team or did you pay a marketing agency to help you? You don't have to tell us how much you paid or how much you're putting into advertising it. But are you guys doing that outside of uh, just creating the campaign and your own networks? So at the end it was somehow of course we paid something, but um, it's all about friendship. I mean we we know someone and he's a friend of a friend and he brought some people in and. 
at the end, it's, it's now really like the, the whole team is more like a family. So we all work together, we Skype the whole day and try to meet as most possible. And yeah, of course, we, I mean, everyone has to live somehow on it, but um, it's more a friendship thing and doing a nice project together. Yeah, we, we, we've called in a lot of favors in the last 12 months. <laughs> I'm sure. I know how that works. So, how many people are on the dedicated, like, work full time for, on this uh, for this company? And then the next step, I guess, is have you guys hired yet to just help you manage the what's going on for the Kickstarter campaign? Because I, I know at least a few people have had to hire a couple interns or a couple full time customer support people just to deal with uh, the influx of. Uh, of Kickstarter questions and uh, fulfillment and stuff. Well, we, I mean, most Kickstarter questions are answered by Nikolai himself. <laughs> um, and we think that that's one of the things that's important is to treat people who have confidence in our company with, with respect and, and not to hire interns just to bash out any sort of response. But all of the comments we get are read. They're often discussed amongst us. And then we, we try to respond. I mean, a lot of them, the questions that come now have been asked before, but sometimes there's a twist on them and it's interesting. So every um, single question is answered by, by us, truthfully and fully. I, I want to hit on a couple of the, you know, let, let's, let's talk about the Apple patent issue really quick. I know that you guys addressed that in a recent backer update. I want to give you a chance to address it in person. There, you know, and for anybody that isn't aware, there was a piece that ran in TechCrunch uh, that basically made a case that Apple had a patent on uh, a biometric sensor-packed health monitoring earphones with head gesture control or something along those lines, uh, there was some speculation that, that you guys might run into that, uh, that patent at some point. So, so the floor is yours. What do, you, what do you say about this? Well, I mean, of course, we're, we're aware of the patent. And um, well, we believe that it's, it's different and that it won't affect the, the delivery of the dash. Um, what about the, you know, you guys hit Windows Phone support, I think, on a stretch goal, uh, you know, about a half million dollars ago or so. Uh, so you plan on you plan on releasing software for iOS, Android, and Windows. And, you know, my, my Misfit Shine hat has to go on. They had some issues uh, with Android specifically, and there have been other campaigns that have promised iOS and Android support uh, with, the, with the launch of a product and missed that target. Why should we feel comfortable that you guys can can deliver all three platforms at once? Well, I mean, it has to be said that we're not going to do all this work ourselves. So the, the platform that, that we will use first will be iOS. Android is something that we've had planned from the start. So we don't view that as a stretch goal or as particularly risky. And then the Windows Phone is, uh, is going to be done for us. But um, the Android platform, it, it has its, well, we all know what the Android platform is, shall we say. <laughs> um, but we, we had that plan from the beginning, so um, we, we, we're confident we can deliver. Um, have you, ha, has this campaign led to any follow-on investment questions? Anybody, you know, kicking the tires on, on Bragi now outside of this campaign? Uh, oh, yes, yes. I mean, people have contacted us. Um, and various companies are offering support of test equipment, measuring equipment, uh, development assistance, new and exciting sensors that we could consider packing into the device. Um, you know, the publicity is not a bad thing, so I have to say. It's thrown up some interesting possibilities. I believe you, strangely enough. Um, let's, <laughs> let's go through some of the questions from the audience. Uh, Julian asks, uh, how close are the prototypes to the final dash? Do the ones we see in the promo video, uh, do, do those prototypes work? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if I can unplug it from its, from its nest, but sitting on my desk just next to it is the first prototype, which, shall we say, definitely won't fit in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> um, then the, the problem with the, 
the embedded side. So, so getting something small enough to fit in your ear is actually very expensive. Mm. And this is one of the reasons that we're, we're happy the Kickstarter has been a great success because we can now afford the luxury, if we need to, of, of more prototypes for improvements and, and uh, refinements. But we hope, naturally, to get everything right first time. And the prototype that we ship to our um, backers on, on Kickstarter will be the same as what we go into mass production with. But the miniaturization, is, it's a very high technology. And um, we believe we've got it right, but it's a development project. So, you know. There's a bit of risk, as with uh, as with There's all products. Risk, we, we we have in the plan a couple of iterations before we ship anything to uh, to our Kickstarter backers. Um, so I mean, they the Kickstarter backers won't be given the first alpha. They'll be given something that we're confident works. Um, it should be the same that goes into mass production. That is the plan. Um, Michael asks, uh, what Bluetooth class do you use for the permanent connection between the two dashes, or a, I guess just what what Bluetooth classification are you guys using in general? Uh, there, there was a health risk uh, concern. Well, the I mean the health risk is a kind of a perennial question for anything that uh, you hold a radio to your head. Right. Um, in terms of the transmit power, compared to them having a mobile phone conversation, it's really it's not significant. I mean, you, you, you need to look at the size of the battery and think how much harm can possibly be inside that. Um, Todd asks, do you consider this to be a piece of wearable tech akin to Google Glass, or do you guys uh, categorize it as, as this is something completely different? Well, I mean, it's kind of fun to be put in the same sentence and compared to a Google Glass. Um, <laughs> I wish we had their development budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep marketing your Kickstarter campaign. You never know. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, we're going to have to put that as a stretch goal. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, it, it's, um, I mean, obviously, I, it does classify as, as wearable tech. I mean, it, it's, but it, is it the same as the Google Glass? Well, I mean, I mean, the, the interesting part about it is, is the same way that, that Google had to do things we've, We've had to find a way of feeding back to the, to the user what it is that, that we're measuring. So there is quite a bit of innovation in the user interface. And I, I wouldn't dare to compare our project to the Google, uh, to the Google Glass, but um, we've, we've spent a lot of time, I mean, this is more partners department, a lot of time thinking about how to interact with the user, what information to present, how to do it. And the design process has been... I mean, I think one of the most important things for us was I mean, to find something that somehow don't disturb the, the user while doing sports. So it's, it's, I mean, it's a lifestyle product as well, but the, the most important thing is doing sports on the most um, yeah, efficient way. And so we try to have a product that is not disturbing you while, while acting. And, um, we think now we found a way where, where it's, I mean, it's in your ear, and um, your ear is somehow a place that is, yeah, it's it's not affecting you any anyhow. So you can use it while doing every sport we we found till now. So and um, we're still practicing and testing all day, and everything that we find new, we we, we try them, and if they fit, and if somehow it's it's not disturbing. And so now we think it's really, yeah. Through this audio feedback, it's it's really a good thing that it's not disturbing you and you are free in all your movements. That's the most important thing for us. Uh, Kita asks, uh, and I, I'm sorry if I'm butchering names. This this is very difficult. Uh, what sort of warranty will be offered with the dash? I know that there's a mention of a warranty on your site for I believe a year, but I'll let you clarify. Uh, th th there's a fear of it falling off one day, and this is actually something that I heard, uh, you know, dangling this out in, in, in the Facebook world and asking, you know, what people might be looking for. One one person mentioned, you know, if if uh, it would be cool if when I dropped the device since it had Bluetooth, if I could go back and try and find it with my phone, you know, along where I was running, 
it say somebody loses one ear, can they can they order a single a single unit from you guys after the fact, and and then talk a bit about the warranty, I guess. So um, the first thing is when you lose one, we have this light feedback. This is one thing that will flash on, mm -hmm. so it's it makes the first step easier to find. Then we have the audio feedback. So when you lose one, the other one will give you an audio feedback to find the other one again. So there would be a beep, like you know it when people are running around the shore and searching for metal or something, so you have this feedback to find it back very easy. Um, but still, we believe it fits, so we are really sure that it won't fall out of your ear, out of your doing, I don't know, big wave surfing or something. So, um, but still then, if you lose it, if you lose one and you have to order another one, there will be somehow uh, yeah, a discount on the next one, so that you just have to buy one. We might ask for a print of your ear so we can figure out why it fell out. <laughs> it makes one better. Um, I love this question. Julian asks, uh, <laughs> will, will Oktoberfest in Munich slow down the first deliveries? It slows down everything in Munich. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shane asks, uh, you know, you mentioned that you were working out of your garages. Uh, can you just give some insight into that uh, that development process over the last few years, how that's been, it, it, you know, that's obviously, it's something that I think a lot of people, uh, frankly, fantasize about, you know, that a lot of companies were built in garages and, and you guys are kind of living that firsthand. so what's, what's that like? It's fantastic, it's tiring, <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually the, the, the important thing is the idea, the imagination to, to have the idea and then to think, well, okay, it's, I mean, when, I'll be honest, when Nikolai approached everybody with the, the idea for the dash, we were like, really? You, you think that you can do that? And then, you know, it just sparked the imagination, and, and the more we looked at it, the more feasible we thought it was, and then ultimately we decided, yeah, actually, we can do this. Um, but it takes a, a lot of effort, and we, we've all been working evenings and weekends for for a year, for more than a year, and the bills still have to be paid, so we have to do work to get paid as well, and it's, um, it's tiring, it's, it's tricky. But once you get to the stage where, as has happened to us, the, you end up with a community believing that you can do this, then it becomes much easier. We've believed that we can do this for years. I, I ran, you mentioned, uh, once your parents and everybody's on board, then it's easy. Well, I ran this idea by my mother, and um, she didn't get it. My, yeah, my, uh, you know, I still tell my parents that I work for a crowdfunding startup, and when they figure out what crowdfunding is, I'm going to be really excited. Uh, we're just getting over that hump now. Um, <laughs> I mean, with that, I think that's the, that's a good number of questions. Thanks, everybody, for participating. Thank you both for participating in the call. This is, like, hugely cool that we get to talk to two people that are that are in an active campaign as big as yours. So, um, it, it you know, not only does it help everybody understand the crowdfunding space, it also helps your backers understand your product and, and who you are and why you're doing what you're doing. So uh, thank you very much. Congratulations on your raise. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to say a big thank you to our backers on Kickstarter. We are oh. humbled, we are humbled, and uh, now we deliver. Yes. Yes, that was the, the the last thing I wanted to say. Is 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 there anything that you want to say to your backers? So, uh, so there it is. Uh, thanks again thank for, for participating. Thank you. <laughs> Best of luck, and uh, we'll catch up soon, okay? All right. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys.